homegrown passion. I know it's been a while since we put up a video. We've got a lot of stuff going on here at the farm. See in the background, we're getting a tree fixed here by the house. A big branch hanging over the house, so we're getting that cabled up. We had a major flood come uh, last week or so, and I'm going to show you everything that we went through with that. It was a huge mess and a pain in the butt. And we got some strawberries going again, and I got some things growing in the greenhouse, so stay tuned and see what's happening. I'm back in the greenhouse for the first time since we went on our little trip. And it's amazing what you find when you come back. I can't believe these tomatoes. I had cut off the tops and cut them all the way down and just left the stems. And look at all these suckers that grew until I didn't get finished cleaning up. But oh my gosh, they went crazy. I had to keep the water going on this line because I do have my pepper plants down here. Unbelievable. Well, I got tired of seeing all those tomato suckers growing and everything else that was in here. I had some white flies and everything was at the end of its life stage for us. So I want to get all cleaned up and ready for this fall to start more tomatoes and English cucumbers for my CSA. So I'm emptying out the beetle buckets now and what a mess they, everything leaves behind. It's amazing how many dead leaves and flowers and crickets are underneath the beto buckets, but I'm getting everything out, pulling out in my little cart here. As you can tell, the greenhouse isn't super full right now. I decided to take the summer off from the farmer's market, just kind of take a little breather, which just feels good. But I'm ready to start cranking it back up for the uh, fall and winter time, which is my favorite times to be in here. Summertime, it gets a little too hot and humid in here, but I still enjoy growing. I'm emptying out the beto buckets into my tank here. You can see I got a pretty good load going. I wanted to show you this really quick. So this beto bucket was for my cucumber plants. I used them growing medium twice and you can see how many roots are in there. And just another reminder, when you empty out your beto buckets, don't forget to get out your elbow there. I've lost a few over the years. This one's not too bad with the algae. It'll be easy to clean. Some of these other ones over here are a little bit worse, but it won't be too bad to clean these up and get them ready for another season. We've had a few problems going on around here these past few weeks. We decided to take a quick trip to Niagara Falls. We always like going there and have a good time. And we came back and everything was good. But then the next day we had this amazing flood is all I can say it was. We had over seven inches of rain in about three hours time. We came back to the head house hoping we could save it. It was about 11 o'clock at night because we heard it raining and raining. We thought, well, we better get up and go check it out. So we did. And the water kept rising and Doug was trying to divert it around the uh, greenhouse in the head house digging some trenches with his excavator which usually works well this time it didn't water just kept coming in through the front door of the head house and underneath the garage door and we realized looking at the radar it was just going to keep raining so there was nothing we could do that evening or that night so we went back up to the house about 1 a.m. next morning we got up to see what was going on back here and like I said the whole head house is flooded mud was everywhere it was just covered with slime we had slime in the greenhouse slime in the, in the nutrient tank. It was just one huge mess. But luckily, you know, with Doug, with all his uh, equipment that he saved over these years from the different businesses, he was able to take care of everything for me, get the nutrient tank totally cleaned out and get it back up and running for me after we had to wait a few days, of course, because of all the high water. But we were able to get everything back up and running, and here we go. Nutrient tank is all cleaned out now. Doug got all the sludge and mud out of the bottom of it that had settled down there. Luckily he had kept a water extractor from his moldy mediation business from years ago. And that thing has been a lifesaver. So ready to start off with a brand new clean tank and fresh nutrients. So since we've had so many trees down, like the maple tree that fell down during the one storm a couple weeks back across the driveway and dug with his wood miser, he has so many piles of slab wood that we're never going to get to use in the wood burner because we just have so much of it. So we decided to rent this wood chipper for the day. This thing was a monster. It was amazing. So Doug was able to use his grappling bucket on his excavator and pick up the big pieces of slide, uh, slab wood and slide it right in and it chipped it right up. And I have this amazing pile of chips right now that I can use for all my landscaping and starting to put it around and it just looks great.
strawberry house. As you can see, my strawberries are doing wonderful. I've been picking about 20 to 25 pounds every other day off these guys. It's just been amazing. So we're going to try to get back to, we're not going to try, we are going to get back to weekly videos for you guys to show everything that, all the projects that we're doing here. I'm going to build a garage for my van, got to build a lean-to for Doug's wood miser and got some wood to cut. So we got a lot of things going on and we're going to keep you guys updated and bring you on in and see what's going on. So like always, please leave me comments, questions and suggestions down below.